In this video, I'm going to rerun the top net and recook the cliffs at a higher subdivision level. This is really to push the detail level and make full use of nanite. This is going to introduce some memory issues that will cause Unreal to crash, but I want to demonstrate how you can get around to some of those issues. I want to give a full disclaimer up front. I will have to fast forward through some of these uh, process because it did take several hours to run and import the geometry into Unreal. But I wanted to take the time to demonstrate this process because uh, if you do take the time, you can get a lot of data into Unreal using Nanite. But for anyone that might have a lower spec machine, might have less memory, they might also encounter some of these memory issues at lower subdivision levels. So now we've got uh, those set of files loaded into Unreal. I want to up this again and push this a bit further and see if we can get some more detail. So I'm going to increase the subdivisions to three. And I'm going to leave delete threshold at 1000. I'm going to delete stages four, five and six. Because on the cliff generator, that's where I've increased the subdivision. So I'm going to delete everything after that stage because those are the only items that I need to rebuild. And come back to our top net, come back to the cliff generator, and I will dirty this node. That's going to dirty this node and all the nodes after it. So let's just select the last output and I'm going to right click cook node and that's going to begin cooking our work items again with that higher subdivision level and I'm going to let that run and we'll take a look at the results. I expect this will take um, a few hours to process because we've got a lot of work items, a lot of subdivision levels and we might even see some work items running out of memory but let's see how it goes. The top net's finished cooking now. It took about two hours to recook the top net now that I'd increased that subdivision level. If you find any work items failing because you're running out of memory, then you can change the settings on the local scheduler. Where it says total slots is currently equal to one quarter of the total CPU count. So this will only use a quarter of the available CPU cores. You can change it to custom slot count and specify a number of slots. So with one selected, that means I'll only have one work item cooking it once. So you won't have multiple work items um, competing to use the available memory. The next step is to import these updated cliffs into Unreal. So let's come back to Unreal. The first thing I need to do is delete these old cliffs. So I'm going to select all of these cliffs and delete those. Save those changes to the scene. And then come to the contents browser and delete the previously baked cliffs. So now that they're deleted, I can use the file pattern to re-import the updated cliffs. So now that I've removed the previous versions of the cliffs, we're ready to recook our digital asset. So let's check our settings. So I have auto bake checked so that I'm cooking the output and baking. And I'm also going to check auto load work item output files and work item output files visible. So now when I hit bake, the results will be automatically loaded into the scene and set to visible. I am leaving the file pattern string as it was before, so it's asterisk forward slash asterisk dot bgeo, and that will import all of the files that are in the cliff tile split folder. So that's going to import all of our updated cliffs that I've just uh, cooked with the subdivision level of three. So now that's ready, I'm going to click Cook Output and Bake. And now that cook is in progress, 
I'm just going to have to wait and um, let the results finish. This could quite, quite take some time. Let's also bring up the task manager so we can monitor our resource usage. I don't know if my computer will have enough um, memory to load in all of these files in one go now that I've increased the subdivision level, but um, we'll wait and see and see what happens. If it crashes, then I can walk through the process of importing the files in batches that hopefully avoids uh, any crashes. I'll continue to leave this recording so that um, if it does crash, you can then see the experiences that I've had trying to import large amounts of data into Unreal. And then I can go through some of the ways in which I've tried to avoid these kind of um, memory issues. There we go, and that did indeed crash. The crash error message um, stated that I ran out of memory, which was what I expected. It also said that my page file was too small. A page file is a reserved portion of your hard drive that can be used as an extension of your computer memory. So I would recommend that you have enough uh, free space on your hard drive to allow that page file to increase. You can increase the size of this paging file in your Windows Advanced System settings. And while increasing this paging file um, did help a little bit, I still find myself quite often um, running out of memory and crashing. So now I'm going to restart Unreal and try importing these files in smaller batches. Now that Unreal is launched, come to the Houdini Engine menu and create session. The Houdini session is ready and let's click refresh so that the PDG is ready and I can try importing those files again. So we have auto bake enabled. I'm going to leave the auto load work item output files unchecked and then come down to our file pattern string. Just refer this to the defaults. So first of all, I'm just gonna load in the file from just our first folder. That's this folder here. And if I click cook, I put and bake, we can see there's 50 items ready to be imported from that folder. With those work items ready, I'm going to click load work item objects. And we'll just leave that running and see if we get those first 50 items loaded in. I'll fast forward through this section. It took about 30 minutes in total for Unreal Engine to load in these 50 files. Let's have a look. Covering those assets are hidden, so let's unhide them. And there we go. We have the first batch of cliffs imported and our scene didn't crash. So we have 50 cliffs imported from our first folder. Let's just save our project. Memory usage has increased, but I think we're safe to import another batch of files. Before I import the next set, I need to make sure that this replace mode is set to create new assets. If it's set to replace existing assets, then it will replace the files or replace the cliffs that we've already loaded in. But obviously we don't want, we want to keep those and just add to it. So make sure that this replace mode is set to create new assets. And I'm going to set this now to five to zero zero five zero to, to load in the next subfolder. Double check, auto bake is checked. Replace mode, create new assets, cook output and bake. The next 50 work items are ready to load in. And let's click load work item objects. So now those are loading in as well. It took about 30 minutes last time to load in those files. 
So I'm going to leave this running and come back to it in about 30 minutes to see if those files have loaded in. And at least if we do get a crash, I've been able to save the project and I won't lose those previous 50 cliffs that I imported. I'll skip ahead to when the files have finished importing. It took about 30 minutes to import the files. Okay, those have finished importing. Let's just double check. Currently they're hidden. So let's just unhide all of these. And select them. And there we go, we've got some more cliffs imported. Our memory has usage has increased, so I'm just going to save this and restart Unreal. Now that Unreal has restarted and freed up some memory, I'm going to try importing a larger batch of files this time. Whereas before I was importing 50, I'm going to try importing 100 and see whether or not my computer can handle um, loading in that many files at once. I'm going to start a Houdini session and then come down to our PDG, hit refresh, wait for that to be ready. And let's change this file pattern string. This time I'm going to type 0, 1, question mark, question mark. So this will import any files that are in a folder that lead with a 0 and a 1. So that'll be these two folders here. So that should be 100 files. I want to make sure that create new assets is selected for our replace mode and auto bake is checked. Let's click cook output and bake. Now it's ready to load those work items and let's load those work items. I'm just going to save the scene before I do that and let's begin loading in those files. This time it took about an hour to load in all of the work items so double the amount of work items took twice as long to import. So that's another batch of uh, cliffs in successfully imported. Make them more visible. And I'm just going to select all of those cliffs. And I can see now it says 200 selected. So that confirms that the 200 work items have been imported. So now that I've demonstrated the um, basic workflow that I used, I'm really just repeating that process uh, several more times. And rather than just demonstrate the same process again and again, I'll speed through this. But I just want to reiterate that it took several hours to go through this process of importing these files in batches. This was the only way that I could import this uh, amount of data into Unreal. Being patient and letting Houdini and Unreal process and import the data. So now I've restarted Unreal and I'm going to load in the next batch of files. And this time I'm going to update the file pattern string from 01 to 02. Just double check that the settings are correct. Our replace mode is set to create new assets. Auto bake is checked. Click cook output and bake and confirm that is the correct number of work items. And it all looks correct. So I'm going to click load work item objects and begin loading in the next batch of files. Just as it did briefly, this took about an hour to import the uh, next batch of 100 tiles. Now I'm ready to import the final batch of cliffs. I always double check my settings before I start loading in work items just so I avoid making any mistakes and wasting uh, time importing the wrong set of files. So check that the replace mode is set to create new assets. Auto bake is checked. And update the file pattern string. So this time I'm going to type 0, open square bracket, 3, 4, close square bracket, followed by two question marks. And that file pattern will match any folder 
that leads with 0, 3 or 0, 4. And if we take a look at the folders in that directory, that'll be these final three folders that lead with either 0, 3 or 0, 4. Click Output and Bake. Check the work items. We have 117 files left remaining to import. And then click Load Work Item Objects to import the last batch of files. And just as it did previously, this took about an hour to load in these work items. Now that process has finished, we have glyphs for our, the entire island. So just to recap, I initially cooked the glyphs at a subdivision level of 2, so I knew this would be quicker and easier to import. I did that for the entire island, kind of went through the process of importing them, and then once I was happy with the delete small cliffs threshold I'd set, I redid the process, recooking the cliffs at a higher subdivision level. I knew this would probably more be more um, memory intensive, so I first initially tried importing all of the cliffs in in one go, all of the files, but I was running out of memory, so that was causing the scene to crash. So what really helped was importing using the file pattern top node that I created, and that way I could import files in batches of 100, um, ensuring that I was not running out of memory. So this concludes the Houdini section of this video series. The next video, or the final video, will be just setting up the final material for the cliffs.